it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today we're going to paint a beautiful coneflower and hummingbird. This is kind of a revisitation of one of my early paintings that I felt like I could do better. But I also feel like I put a bunch of new twists on it. I know it was a bit getting into the live stream today for <laughs> some reason. The live video link that we had sent you all just ceased to exist as something we could do. It's YouTube completely believe we streamed it. Um, so we had to make a new one. And if you were looking for the correct video, this is it. You found us and I'm so glad that you did. We're going to be working on a 16 by 20 today. And I really only have one wish given everything going on in the world, which is that safety and hope for those that are defenseless. Um, so people who don't have a way to protect themselves be protected from the craziness of other people who have more power than they do. Um, over here on the palette, I am going to be using Mars Black, Cad, Yellow Medium, Cad Red, Quinacridone, Magenta, Burn Sienna, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Altering Blue, and I mean, th Titanium White and Altering Blue, but let's just start with two. Ooh. Ooh. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's put a step up and get going because oh, we started so late today. You want to step already? I want to step already. All right, step fine. It. Let's go. This is your step. step. What? You've got my peacock shirt today, which I never know how I feel about, but I just felt like wearing it. Yeah. All right. So I put out titanium white and phthalo blue, and we're going to be using one of these types of brushes. Now, I've referred to these as bulletin cutters or house painting brushes. I usually use the artist version of these. These are really pricey. These are not. And I'm going to show you how you can just use these. I do think this is a good type of brush to have in a brush bucket just to do big areas when you need to. On a canvas and these are just a few dollars so the trick to this is just making sure you de-shed them and then they're just fine and I, I found brushes like this that were quality ranging anywhere from six dollars up to a crazy 60 so full <laughs> range of price experiences there but it's a real common brush and if you're thinking that looks like a house brush you totally got it I'm gonna pull this down the shield shield the artwork because it needs protection and we're gonna just Paint the background. Now, the first All thing right. I'm going to do, since I put my wishes out here in watercolor, I'm going to miss this so that I can kind of brush the watercolor words away. That way they're not, you know, bleeding through into the painting. Not that it isn't fun to have words come through sometimes, but, you know. This is a micro mister, mm -hmm. if you're wondering what that is. Now, here's the trick to these brushes. I'm going to show you in, in this cam here. I'm going to barely touch the edge. See how I'm barely touching the edges of the bristles? I see. To the water. That's because I got to control the water. And then I'm going to tap out on towel. So when I go to get some white, and I'm going to kind of brush out a little bit of white all over the canvas. If I lose a little hair, I will just flick it away, as you sometimes do in natural brushes. Synthetics, you don't really lose hairs on so much. Because they can glue them and control them a little more. So when I have a nice little coat of white on there, I'm going to be able to do a very blended, soft sky background. So you get a little bit of your phthalo blue. And come around and see how I'm kind of doing a little curve and cross stroke? Yeah. Like that. And I'm trying to keep it a little uneven. And that just gives us a diffuse sky-like background. Yes, it does. This works because the wet paint is already on the surface, which allows some wet into wet blending. And the way this brush has these sort of diffuse blendy bristles, I can come in and get a really neat sort of oil effect almost. Just background. It's just yeah. easy. Easy peasy. Hmm. Light That's touch. I'm not pressing in. Notice my canvas isn't even bending in from my touch. So Marla has a very good question. Hi, Marla. Will my purdy three inch cutter work for this? Your purdy makes a real good brush. <laughs> like, I want to go talk to them about brush making later in the year, you know? <laughs> they make a good brush. I think they could be a future uh, brush maker. 
<laughs> that would be a surprise. They call. They didn't expect. <laughs> yes. Hi, I teach well, art I'm sure on the internet. Well, I'm sure we're way below the minimum order requirement for a big company like that. So what I'm doing here, and this is just a little kind of finishing effect. See how by dusting very, very lightly. Oh, it's so lightly. Pressure is so light. And as the canvas is sort of drying, it creates this ability for me to sort of blend and blush. Ah. Blend and blush. Blend and blush. Kind of like a blend and snap, but it's a blend and blush. blush. Mm. And now we've got this just gorgeous so background. Be sure and get the paint out of your brush. You want to kind of rinse that out a bit and definitely do a full wash after every painting session. Oh, so that just went all over the floor. Didn't need that floor anyways. I wasn't that attached to it. So there we've got a nice little diffuse little sky. That's a diffuse sky. Background. So we got to dry it. Okay, you dry it. Before then we'll the step. next step. Then we'll do that. Okay. Right. So if you guys are new here, then welcome. It's a really cool place to come and learn to paint. We love having new beginners here. We love to help you learn all the cool stuff about never painting before. Uh, because that's what we like to do, is help people learn to paint. Because we believe that um, art changes people, and people change the world. So that's what we do. So come paint with us. And then post your pictures up on either the um, which right now, yeah, just just say, go check out the artsherpa.com, because it's got a lot of cool stuff. Um, and then our Facebook page, where we also have some stuff, despite Facebook being what Facebook is or is not. It is a place where we have a cool group where you can post up pictures and there's lots of cool people who will hang out with you and tell you about their art journey. So that's pretty cool. I'm wondering if I should update my blending video and add this technique into it. Add the technique. Maybe it's 12 easy blending techniques Ooh, to blend acrylics a, like oils. A 12th. 12 of them instead of six. Double the techniques. All right. Double the techniques. That's some clickbait there. Do you, do you need a step? That's not clickbait because I actually do it. Are you I stepping? do need a step. Okay. Or you it's get not it out of, clickbait out of if hand. it's real. It's clickbait if it's not real. Oh, well. Right. I, I guess mean, even know. my most like kind of clickbaity titles, if you look at the video, you're like, oh, that's true. That's you're true. like, I quit. You know, and then I didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of over those just personally. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm a viewer like you, so. Now, if you had a number 30 Sherpa, could mm -hmm. you have used that for the Oh, if things? you have a number, sure, sure, but take care of it. They don't exist in the world anymore. You got to love it while you have it. We'll be Just doing that, something baby. else. We're going to make more, but uh, not with not brush, but with, Just we're going to make more. Different. Enjoy that brush the way you have. It's a very good brush. I'm going to get a brush I can kind of sketch out with. Now, you guys have a traceable. And if you're using a traceable, this would be the step you're using it. Definitely dry your canvas. If you don't know how to do a traceable, I have a video on how to use a traceable. So you don't even have to know that. But I'm going to draw this out for you with paint so that you can see it. Because uh, that went so well with the ballerina yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to do that. And that way, if you want to uh, draw along with me, you can. Or use a traceable, either one at this step. I've got a number four round. It's a nice detail round. And we want to kind of visually imagine the center of the canvas, the center vertically and horizontally. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to say that just above this and over a little bit, I'm going to put in a little bird head. And it's going to be like a little curve up and down. A little curve in and down. Because, you know, I just thought... Hey, let's do this in bright blue paint. What could go wrong? Mm. I don't know. It's blue. everything. I like blue. You like blue? Yeah, it's a good color. It's my it's favorite a good color. color. I'm going to just kind of come here with a damp brush and sort of push it back a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I can do that. Because, you know, it's cute. I'm going to make sure that there's more of a curve down in the jaw. Now, on a hummingbird, we love the belly. We want to make them a very nice, well-fed hummingbird. And this little fellow is definitely more focal in the canvas. So we want to make him bigger. I'll come down a little bit on the back of the head. See, dipping down. Now, 
I'm going to actually draw the back before putting in the wing because there's an important sort of uh, bow to the back. See how that's a little bit bent out? Uh huh. You're and just that using will blue help here, me right? set my tail. You can see how we get the tail in then. And that's the tail that can hold our little bird aloft. Ah. And come down. Once I place those feathers, then I can add a little point to them. Now, the wing, I'm going to want to bring up fairly high, almost up into this point. Give it a nice bit of scale there, isn't it? Because hummingbirds really have quite a lot of wing. I'm going to sort of sketch out the outer dimension of my wing. Even before I put into individual feathers, I just want to make sure that I get the correct shaping of that so that it looks like it could carry the bird. If you like hummingbirds, I have a whole bunch of videos uh -huh. Lots with hummingbirds. Of this one's going to come down almost mid-wing. Come out, not all the way to the, you want to leave room between the edge of this and the canvas. There we go. Now here's the fun part. Beak. The beaks. Yeah. There you go. You got to feed a bird. You know what everyone could do? Hmm. They could they could like the video if they like hummingbirds. Like the video if you like hummingbirds. That way we could see it. You could well, like the video not. if you just like me too. It's okay. And I want to thank everybody for coming to the one minute tutorial this morning. Well. I, I'm specifically, do you like cinnamon's hummingbirds? Because well, there we go. Now, let's put in a big flower, right? Big flower. Close by. This is this is a big flower and a small hummingbird. Because mm. that's what we do. So it's kind of a little button. There's these little cone flowers, right? And a little button. And then the easiest thing to do is then come from the bottom... I that wonder. way you get the stem in, and you just connect it right up to the button. You know you're going to have petals all here, but that way you're like, oh, yeah. And then I can come and put a little leaf up, just an upward line, and then bring a little wiggle out, and then come in. See how it goes out and in to a point? Bring it out and in. Now, I'm particularly excited about this flower. Because? I, I think it looks super cool with the pink and white and the how kind of, it <laughs> just, it struck me as like a cool looking flower. Well, cone flowers are cool flowers just to have them in the garden. We did. Mm. We did, we did. Now, this is a good time to make sure you've got a really cool button on there. And I'm not going to worry about the petals yet. I'm going to know that they're going to come, you know, kind of around this area. But I want to get them when um, I do the pink with them. So this is all I want in on this step. This sort of general layout of bird, flower, come together, make joy on canvas. Everyone joy should make your canvas. bird and flower bird emoji. And flower. Make emoji. Bird, bird and, and flower. flower. How many bird and flower emojis bird and can flower. we have? <laughs> Step three is bird and flower emoji. Well, and Boop. more painting. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put the flower in first. <gasps> and then put in the hummingbird. All right. So flower colors that I got to think about, right? Because we got to put out some different colors for the flower. Is that like we can definitely first? put out some yellow green, and we know we're going to use that later for the hummingbird. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Get some burnt sienna and a little tad yellow. And then interestingly enough, I'm going to throw out some cad red over here. Where? Right there, cad oh, okay. red. I'm going to put up a picture. Put cad up. red. Put up the picture. It's there. Cad red there. So I've got cadmium yellow, phthalo green, burnt sand, a little cad red. And let's make sure that we also have a bit of our magenta. Magenta being a wonderful color. It is. And I've squeezed out too much. That's fine. It's the most magenta of the magenta colors. <laughs> it's the most magenta of magenta. 
All right, so we have the Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Thala Green, Burn Sienna. Grab your number four round again. All right, and then we will probably, um, you can do the petals, and I'll show you in both in my cat's tongue or big fat round. And I'll show you both so you know that you are okay no matter what you use, okay? Connie and Bonnie both have wonderful emojis. Yay! Thank you, Connie and Bonnie. Now let's uh let's get a little of our burnt sienna and our phthalo green together. And let's make a nice dark color. Just brush that out. Come to a little joint here. Oh, Adriana has a really nice, she says, I love how you sketch and paint and not pencil. I hope to get there soon. She's practice and practice, <laughs> right? Well, there's a video coming up before uh, Acrylic April this year. Acrylic April, if you don't know, is a 30-day painting challenge I've been doing every year with my community because I'm a crazy person. But it does make a big difference because it's to share with you what changed my art experience the most in my whole life, which is daily painting. And I'm going to show you how I got here because I spent years of my life as a working artist not being here. Mm. And daily painting changed that. I'm going to show you my first daily painting, uh, which some of you have seen if you're members of the Emoji Club or uh, uh, Patronage, um, versus what I'm doing today. And it's a shocking transformation. My first daily painting where I just roughed it out freehand and no plan and none of my usual stuff. Rough. Huh. Rough. But I'll show you where I got, and it'll surprise you. I'm going to just stroke in these little brush strokes like this. It's kind of going to make the leaf shape. See if I pull from the outer edge and let the shape of the brush create the leaf. I don't always got to work Oops. harder to get Sorry. a better result. Wrong button. There right there. See this? I'm just pushing that in. It just, it just gives me the shape of the leaf. You don't always have to, uh, I think one of the things I learned in daily painting is how to work smarter, not necessarily harder, and how to trust my gut. You know, my gut is not always right. <laughs> Sometimes my gut is like, let's eat cotton candy. You won't pay for that. So, you know, you can't always trust your gut. But... In art, it is good to learn how to get confidence in your choices. And I'm just using the brush. Let the brush do the work. And this nice bit of green, what does it do? It gives us a deep base, doesn't it? To work from. While this is all having a dry, and this is going to surprise you, I'm going to put out some, actually Mars Black, believe it or not. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Looking at it? Not a lot. Take a little of my burnt sienna and my Mars black. You need a very deep base for that cone flower. Mm. If you want to get, and I'm going to show you the trick to getting the little uh, yellow part of it to look really epic and real. It's actually easier than you might think. Now, to get my next layer on here and do the next part, I do want it to be dry. I don't want it to be um, a whole, Not a whole new step. step, but it's just a quick dry. dry. Quick dry. So, yeah, make sure uh, uh, make sure it's thoroughly dry here. This will help make so that when you put the next layer on there, it, it looks okay. And uh, that's just a, a little thing you'll need to do between the steps. Um, 
thank you to everybody from all over the world who's joining us. I noticed we have folks in Mexico and all over Europe. Wonderful to see you guys. And of course, all of our Australian folks. Yeah. Just saying hello to everybody hi. all over the world. Oh, I want to say hi to Spider's friend. I don't know. I meant to say it at the beginning, Spider. Tiny called... 127. Yes, Tiny 127. Something like that. He has some numbers. His numbers. <laughs> so sometimes my kids. Friends come by and are very supportive, and I really appreciate it because, man, this is the internet, and it's vicious. Paint. Vicious. All right. We have two brushes here, a tail of two brushes. They both will do the job. I will show you the first one, which is the cat's tongue. So if you've already purchased this or a filbert, all right, we're going to take a little bit of our quinacridone magenta, but let's get some white in it. Why do you mix green with brown? Because uh, it deepens it, so we have a nice deep value. Oh. We could buy a green. Uh, that was like this, or we can just mix it. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and put my longest petal in first. And the trick is going to be you're going to press in and then release as you come closer to the flower. On the top. Let's do that a couple more times, and then I'll show you with the round, all right? Okay. Trying to make sure I've got good, good uh, distance. Now I can come over here. As I come up this side, I'm going to curve up. And if I come down to the bottom, I'm going to curve down. And so you can do it with that, Ooh. not hard. I'm going to rinse out for a second and show you with a big round. This is a number eight round. It is a number eight round. I'm going to do a similar thing. There'll be some small differences, nothing that you cannot overcome. As I come up here, I may want to shorten petals. Now I kind of twist when I want to. Paper it as well as lighten my pressure. There we go. So I've got the flowers and the petals kind of shortening. We have such a lovely chat. Yeah. It's so funny because, you know, there every, we go. every once in a while there'll be a mention by one of the mods or something that we've banned someone. Oh, no. And then it's exactly what everyone says. Everyone goes, oh, no, who got banned? And it was like, <laughs> well, it was someone trying to sell sunglasses or something else that we yeah. didn't want Generally in here. it's the VPN people. Know. The people who have a something, little set of letters and dot org and that takes you somewhere you don't want to go. Yeah. They're, Generally, you just don't want to go there. You don't want to be there. They, they're like, oh, it's got a bot, and it recognizes a live stream, and the bot sneaks in and does stuff. And somehow, <laughs> the YouTube algorithm can't see it. Yeah, so <laughs> no. if you guys are just joking around, we don't think anyone here in no. chat's trolling us. Don't worry. No. We're only talking about, like, these robots that come along that we get. It's, so you guys are fine. All right. Now let's call that a step. You think so? Yeah, because that's the underpainting of the flower, and the All rest right. of the flower goes pretty quick from here. But if you got that in, you kind of got your flower. You make it bigger, you make it smaller, but that's the basic flower. Four to the flower. Four to the flower to the floor. Okay. Boop. You're done. Go on to the next teach. Next step, I'm going to get back into my green. I'll keep using my big round because it's in my hand. The big round brush, you could use the cat's tongue. I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my yellow into the green and brown mixture. You know, if you remember that I had from before. Ooh, not that one. That one. Ooh, that I can see there. And I'll come here and kind of go over my dark value. You can see it creates some nice depth.
Yellow and green are very transparent colors, as is brown. So, you know, it's okay if you have to come back over something to get real, real quality. Let's uh, hit this little leaf. If here you're not getting coverage, you may have paint that's very thin. And my tip for that, and I always say this because it happens to everybody, so don't feel weird, um, is to paint everything white first. That's an object. So like the leaves and the flower. If you're not getting coverage with your paint in the way that I am, it's just thin paint. And that's okay. Thin paint happens. Make a little fine line at the top of the stem. Leave a little bit of my dark. So many of our friends are here today. There we go. So now we've got a little bit of a shading on the stem, right? You want to get more shading? We're going to take our yellow. And we're going to lighten our green mostly with our yellow before we ever get our white involved. Now, when we get to that bright green, we can get a little white involved. And I can come here and kind of a center vein. A bit of a highlight on the leaf. Come here, see I'm just touching and pulling. Mm -hmm. A little bit of highlight on the leaf. You need to get a little water. It's okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. A little bit of a vein. All right, let's make another little highlight on the stem. That looks good. Look at that, we got some little shaded leaf. Mm -hmm. Yay! Rinse, 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 rinse out to your brush. Okay. And while we're here, let's uh, make these petals look a little more dramatic. All right. I'm going to get a little more white into my pink. We like the dramatic petals. We like them. They're good. And I kind of like to loosely mix it so there's some interesting variants. And then come up from the top. And just have a little pink highlight. I leave some of the dark there to show. So this, uh, Angela was Right just on the toe. Hmm. Angela was asking, is this a, this seems like a good, uh, good project to help with um, perspective and framing and composition. Cause it, it does have some elements for that. Um, what I'll say uh, in composition is it's an interesting thing because what's wrong in one painting is right in another. <laughs> what do you so, mean by that? Well, if you look at it in art, even if you look at a rule of thirds, which is really just the guide of thirds, that's sort of an art urban myth that there's a rule. But when you look at that, you'll see artists in the museum that break that all the time. Right? But sometimes in a student's work, I might say, hey, you know, have you thought about dividing the canvas up into thirds? No. That's a painting by painting problem, isn't it? It does teach a nice set of balance. It would seem that... Put a little more pink on this color here as I come down the flower. Give it a little, a little bit of personality. It seems when those composition guidelines are broken, they're done with a purpose. One would hope so, but yes. <laughs> One hopes so. I mean, it. But there is generally purpose. Um, so composition is an arrangement of objects that's pleasing to the eye, right? So right. there's certain things you want to look. Um, the flower coming off the canvas lets us know there's a world beyond the surface of the canvas, as does the sky kind of imply that. But the bird is very static laying all around in here. There's nice negative space in the spaces around the flower and the bird, so they relate to each other. But there's weird symmetry in the arc between the two of them, right? Um, even right down to the balance of the leaf and the leaf and the tail and the wings. So there's yeah. sort of this very balancing thing. So we stay fairly easily on the canvas. If we layered them, it might be even more exciting, challenging, but more exciting. 
So as you look at it, you know, it's fun to play with objects. One of the ni reasons it's nice to work digitally sometimes, I've added some more white to my brush, is that you can play with the composition. You can design an object and then come back and say, hey, would I like this better somewhere else? Yeah. Ooh, there we go. That's you picked up some blue in there. No, I picked up just white. Just white. Oh, okay. Just white and pink. I just wasn't sure if I what I saw there. Sorry. It's okay. I'll always answer it. I am not a magician, and I do want you to guess how the trick is done. So just adding a bit of highlight there, so the flower has some dimension in the pet petals, doesn't it? it? Gives the flower a little little oomph. You can always come back with a little dark color. And I'm just on the toe of the brush. Flicking inward. Look at that. What happens? It kind of makes the edges of those look more interesting, doesn't it? It does. There we go. We got a very nice little flower happening here. Rinse out. Rinse out. And then we're going to dry, and then I'll show you how to do the cone of the flower real quick. Okay. Same step? Different step. step. Different step. So you dry it, then we'll go to the step. Okay. And I need fresh water. Okay. We'll do that Different after step. that. So, man, you guys are awesome. Nice to see everyone chatting out there, having a good time. Just, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support from everyone. Um, all the super chat, the stars, um, the patrons from our website. You guys help us do what we do. These lights could not stay on without you. You could not, we could not have hair dryers or any of these wonderful accoutrements <laughs> without your support. Thank you! Electricity makes it so much easier to make free videos. It super does, doesn't it? It does. So thank you. Coffee too. Coffee. For the coffee. Coffee and electricity seems so to be a lot of what we buy. All right. Do we have a step up? Um. Boop. Let's put in this really cool cone flower. I'm going to put out a little more yellow because I just really want it to be about... My cad red and my cad yellow together. So I'm going to get my cleanest water. And I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow and cad red and make a yellow orange. Okay. So it's still yellow, but it's a yellow orange. I'm going to stay over your shoulder to your right. Just Actually, I'll see if you're left because that's a little no. closer. The and I'm going to get you some clean water. Be making a series of dots. That wrap. Now, it may be good to explain why having clean water is so important at this step. Okay, so in painting, one of the things that can dull your color the most is dirty water. So early on, you need to get in a habit of changing your water. So if you want your colors to stay vibrant, especially your yellows, um, they can be real impacted by the pigment in the water. I noticed the other thing you were doing to really help that is over on your uh, uh, palette. You've got your you've got your colors there, sort of organized all off to the edge and not in the middle of the paint. Right, and I always work these outer limits. Right, and come out here and give me like outer limits. You, I'm here now a little bit more of our red. And if you're looking for the materials, we've got those down. In the description. Yes, always, and, always. And on our website, there's a, there'll be like a little mini book that'll contain all that, and we keep it listed up there. It's just a little downloadable PDF that you can print, uh, you can download, or and even print out if you want. We don't prevent that. I'm just adding little dots. You notice that there's a bit of a curl to that, right? Mm. I'm rinsing out my brush. 
Getting a little of my yellow and white together. It's a little white and yellow. Getting a little bit of that there at the top. Let's get a little just pure yellow on there. That's fun to get a little bright cad. And then I'm going to come in and get some white. Just on the toe of my brush. And that's like a little sunlight hitting the little cone. Isn't that fun? It really it's just is. Just a really fun cone flower. And it's got the nice little twirls in it. And it's really enjoyable to do. Super is. Now, last little touch on our flower here. I'm going to rinse out and get a little white paint on the toe of my number four round. My number four round. Just a nice little detail round brush. And I'm thinning my paint. What you see me doing there is water in my brush. And I'm working the water into the paint and rolling it out. Oh, thank you. Because it's prettier. <laughs> and just adding a little bit of highlights to the petals can be. I'm up there at the top. I'm going to add a little highlight up there at the top. Tapping up and down. Look at that. So this is going to give it some big pop. I think so. And come in and get a little bit of yellow and green again. My number four round. White into it so it's very light. Little short marks there. Look at that. <laughs> Just pops. Mm -hmm. Just makes it pop. All right. I think we're doing good here. Let's move so it on to the bird. The bird is bird. that another step? Bird. Bird is a word. I'm on the bird. bird step. Bird. Step with the bird. The bird step. The bird step is the okay. step. Hello. We're ready for the next person. Angle brush the bird today. I think I do. I'm going to start out with a half inch angle brush. All right. That's a brush cut at an angle. You could also use a brush that is cut across as a braid. Either one of those will work. It'll be okay. Now my gray, I'm going to pull out a little bit of my brown and come and find my, where did I put my ultramarine blue? I had it out earlier. There it is. A little ultramarine out here. Uh, I like to do a little gray with ultramarine blue and, mar uh, and bird sienna because it's a little different than what you get with the black. And it is very reflective of the kind of grays you see in birds. So it's a good, see how there's that slight blue cast to it? So it's a good one to get going when you're talking birds. I'm going to come on the edge of the brush along the wing with that mix of ultramarine blue. And brush that just back along the front of the wing. I'm also going to come along the belly. And brush on a little bit. 
at the belly. So that's burnt sienna and ultramarine gray. A little bit up on the back here. The other thing that this does is this gives us some room to pop black in as kind of a focus surprise of color. Uh, you have a little black in nature. Um, sometimes people say, oh, you don't have any black in nature. But that's not really true. You do have some black in nature. But where you see it, it's sort of exciting to the eye, especially on feathers like this. So. That's an interesting question. Would Payne's Gray be an okay substitute? Yeah, Payne's Gray would be just fine. Has a nice blue tone to it. And you can see I'm brushing out in the direction of the feathers. And I'll come back even on this back wing a little bit into the front wing so that we can layer the feathers better. Mm. So I'll go over my line a bit. Do you guys see that? I can still see my line. <laughs> but it gives some nice separation. That way, if I do get into my white. There are many people there. You have influenced many bruno fans we don't talk about bruno no no <laughs> <laughs> I made john watching kanto again last night <laughs> he's like what's happening <laughs> <laughs> who is this person in the walls and why is he there so good i'm just coming back in little brush strokes and you can see the brush strokes kind of imply the feathers of the wings don't they just coming back letting the brush do that work look how hard the brush worked there it just looks so hard for you mm. oh yeah i mean i don't know i think a lot of us like kind of we just love bruno I'm going to come up here. Wing. Gonna pull this back. Pull back again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I just need the correct spelling. Okay. So, it's a, we're going to have a little request to put a name in the bird before we uh, get all the way in, and we'll do that in just a second. I just wanted to make sure that uh, sometimes we have a pretty pretty uh, hectic pace to put, keep up with in a live, so I want to make sure before I, you know, drop it on her. Hey, can you do this thing for me? So what no, am I doing? I I'm really can't do Evan. it. I need to know the correct spelling. Uh, e V A M. Just if you could put uh, Evan in the bird before you paint it in. Okay, I think I can do that. I think you could do that. E V A N. E V A N. There you go. Little wish of a bird. With a little heart. For Evan. Okay. Can, I lost my brush. Okay. And continue on with Back a little bit of to my gray. the brush again. Right here at the front, I'm going to add a little bit of this gray blue. A little spot of white. And Evan will become part of our little birdie here. Go back with the dark color and kind of let that blend in. Okay, 
Fun fact, horses used to be my favorite thing to paint, but now birds are my favorite. Really? Yeah. I would not have known that. I, it's just a weird change. I just woke up one day and like, man. Birds! Every time I see like a fat little robin or any bird out there anywhere, honestly, if it wouldn't completely cancel my channel, the whole thing would be birds. Have you seen the robins? <laughs> All the are, time. We have little robins living outside our window. I know. They're so cute. I try not to scare them. The fluffy robins. Just try to let them be in their own self. I want them. Let me come in here and make sure that I've got a nice little gray coming back. Now, do you know what kind of hummingbird this is? Ruby-throated somebody. Okay, that's what they thought. <laughs> Ruby red-throated yeah. hummingbird. Yeah, the first time I did this, I did some weird tropical one that had a curvy thing. It was just a weird-shaped hummingbird. And then I was like, I've always like, man, why did I pick that weird bird? Because he was colorful. Huh. And then later I was like, you know what? I'm an artist. <laughs> I could just make any hummingbird colorful. I'm just trying to make sure we get a nice little, get our darker gray going here on the back. You can see I just kind of like let them work together. for me to pay that all right let's call out a step and then i'll start putting in more colors i think that that's just a big kind of thought for like foundation of the bird and um when we come back we'll keep adding color until he yeah. like he's gonna come to life so fast we, you're gonna be like we, what is it a metaphorical comeback because we're not going anywhere it's a it's a step it's a step we stepped it's we're a stepping. step See, we're stepping it's just a step i think that you watch too much tv and had too many commercial breaks, and you're like, and when we come back, we're going to. I do watch a lot of TV, but I don't watch TV with commercial breaks anymore unless, you know, I'm we're on forced one of those, to like, by mandatory some strange... commercial break shows where I'm like, ah, ah, it doesn't forward. Okay. What are we doing? Step. I did it. Okay, then we're going to continue painting on. What are you going to paint? More bird. M more bird. More bird. That was anticlimactic. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't anticlimactic. I'm just saying it's more bird. It's like more cowbell, more bird. It's like, I was, you know, you could always throw somebody like, we're going to paint the Starship Enterprise now. I mean, we could in the background. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Jean-Luc just did a flyby on the. <laughs> I used to do that at painting parties because everybody was a lot slower than me. And I would get to the end and then I'm like, it's the Death Star, not a moon. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <sighs> weird times. Okay. So I'm going to take a little of my green again and some of my burnt sienna because this gives us such a nice deep color. Up into the wing a bit. I like to bring the green down into like some areas of the feathers in the back. Now, is that an angle? This is a half inch angle. Okay. You don't really use uh, flat brushes much, do you? I don't use flats. I use brights. Um, so one of the interesting things is you'll notice uh, oil artists will use a lot of flats. It's because their paint's a lot softer and the um, shading and, uh, and, and work of the flat is just really useful in that way. Whereas a lot of acrylic artists will lean into the brights. Because the paint's a little harder to move around. Yeah. And it gets viscous as it dries, so you need the extra strength of the bristles to yeah, push and the paint. it's real thick, heavy bodied. But if you were doing like fluid paint, you might be doing something different. Just kind of getting his little patterning in. I'm thinking about him. I just love doing him. That's him. I love him so uh, much. I love watching you do him. Just paint, 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 paint. Sometimes I'll put a little dusting down of color in different places just 
making him, you know, more interesting. This is like the bird hat. <laughs> 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 now, see, we can get our black in now, and I might even get a little of my blue into my black, my phthalo blue into my black. I'm going to come up on the underside of the beak. On the back of the head. And again, it's blue and black. It's not just black, right? And so in some ways that ends up being, we're going to make little touches. Little touch just kind of will feel like feathers. That little bit of blue really becomes important. And I'm going to get into my gray that I mixed earlier, but I let my black get into it. And I'm going to come under the beak. Now, if you're waiting on one of those zodiac gnomes, <laughs> they're coming. They're coming up because we're coming back to where we we missed them last time. <laughs> so and the first ones will drop right before uh, uh, it'll be in March, um, and they'll be. I may do both Aprils and uh, March. Like I might double them up that way. Um, everybody has them over acrylic April. If you're not, so some of you who are doing acrylic April on gnomes may be painting them both at one at the same time, and then we'll get all caught up. But we'll get some gnomes out there. They're like, we like the gnomes. They just, you know, the gnomes sometimes have to, you know, like wait for the next bus because the hummingbird flowers got to go. So, you know, they hang around. They're always there. I'm going to get back into my green and kind of make sure that that's touched in there. And then you can always go around, see how there's a very light blue around. So if I'm having any trouble, like I want to take back any of my sketching that I didn't paint. You did it in chalk. You were smart. But I did mine in paint, so I have to take some of it back, right? Mm. Reclaim the sky. To reclaim a little bit. There we go. Man, I'm so serious about birds, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I get a little, I get a little like, this is bird time now. Bird time is serious time. I'm going to just add a little black and blue together and maybe you even don't think use, about coming in under the feathers. You don't use a lot of just black, do you? Um, Not often. You can, and there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. Um, sometimes it can feel in some paintings that as we're painting that um, some colors can dull our palette a bit. Um, but I think that's just generally sometimes just not understanding color theory. And it's better to not take, I think it's better to not take colors off your palette sure. rather than, um, oh, you know, uh, and learn how to use them. Um, some teachers encourage the <laughs> removal of colors from a student's palette. I tend not to do that. I don't take people's crayons away. You know what uh, Heather says? Mm. I'll have to read it because i got to get it right. She says, shh, we don't talk about snar gnomes. No, no. <laughs> we don't talk about snar gnomes. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> Adding a little bit of a highlight to this. I just wanted to exaggerate the uh, shadow between the feathers. You can see I'm just painting very... Let's get some pink on. Okay. Let's 
dark phenacridone magenta, and just a smidge of white. Man, barely any. That was not intuitive for me. Hmm. That magenta made pink. I was like, what? I thought it was like purple or something. Purple made pink? Well, I didn't, I mean, like, I don't think, for me, it wasn't. Like, color isn't super intuitive, especially when it comes to pigments. Because, like, you have green shade and blue shade and, you know, like. No, I'm not judging. I'm just listening. Where did all the little quinacridones come from in the first place? Chemical work done by hardworking developers of color. And if I wanted to be a natural painter, could I request free Rome quinacridones? No, I'm afraid not. They are only bred in the lab. They're like synthetic meat. <laughs> Oh, how 2022 of you is soiling it green years. Sending a little bit of white up into that. Although I tended to be a little more clockwork orange. A little, little white to the tip of those wings. Isn't that nice? There we go. Things are looking good. It's really a light gray, the wing color, but just very lightened. And I'm making sure that I leave a lot of the you know, older color in there. Let's get a little bit of our altering blue and our burnt sienna again into that deep gray. And just kind of tapping up and down. Tap, 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 tap. And then we can go more into the brown. And a little bit kind of brushed across. A little bit of light color. Oh, I'm going to get right in my pink here. So pretty. And a little flash of color that could be kind of popping or peeking out. You never know, right? You never know. You never know. Let's get a little pink here on the tail. Sometimes it's fun to get it mixed into the brown, so it kind of is like... Muted. And that ran, put that right there. It's a little brown and pink. What did we do? Yeah, we did. We can do that. Oh, he's looking cute. Very cute. Back in a little white. A little dark color here, kind of little dark feathers that are up there. I love it. That's really good. Now, you're not using glazing liquid, are you? I'm not using any glazing liquid. Okay. All right. Let's call this a step. Yeah. Kind of like more feathers step. And then we're going to come on and do more feathers. It's eight. Step eight. Eight is the eight, eight, seven, eight, nine. Step eight is great. Yeah. It's between seven and nine. It tries to stay out of the way. <laughs> People unsub when I do this, but I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's your channel. <laughs> what are they going to do? They do exactly what they can do. Don't they... learn to paint. That's what we do here. It was real funny. Um, like I was on Facebook and and somebody came into the event and was like, no thanks. I prefer my in-person classes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for the I commentary. Will not save a virtual seat. <laughs> Be careful there about that virtual little door. Little gray back forward, kind of detailing on his wing. Let's get back into our very light white.
I'm gonna go back into the gray. Little touches there, just kind of giving that little gray highlight. See, it's just giving him some body, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit back here. Now, are those compression gloves or just looking cool 80s gloves? Uh, these are. My knuckles are cooled gloves. <laughs> but I think they're technical use, and I have these on. I put them on the Amazon store, like you guys suggested, with the purses and stuff. Um, they're just, they're normally sunscreen gloves for like when you're driving so you don't get sun on your hands and stuff. Mm. Um, but what happens is sometimes my knuckles get cold and then I can't paint particularly well. So I was like, you know, they probably have all kinds of things for that. I'm going to thin that with water. Sometimes it's fun to kind of put some energetic little highlights. See how that creates like the wings in motion? Mm. A weird effect, but look, it just, just edges them. It does. Just edges them. Now, back into our pink. And I'm going to get a little of my uh, cad red, cad yellow, and white involved in that. Gets me kind of into a coral, as you can see right here. Add a little brown into that mix and kind of saturate there. Rinse out some white. A little yellow. Kind of light through there. So pretty, these little layers. A little highlight of pink through there. Yeah. And then if you get some just white. You get a nice little reflection in the pink part of the bird. Oh, yeah. It's very fun. Yeah. Green. Green? Green. Time to... Get Time super green. To get some green. Super green. All right. I'm going to get some little yellow into that. I got some green. Good. I've got some color ranges there. And we're going to come up here and touch a little bit of more vibrant green. I don't hit this too much with uh, current sienna now because I want a very saturated green. Awesome soup. As I come forward, I can get a little more yellow into it. I like the yellow. The top of the head, I'm going to add some little bright yellow little highlights. See, so it pops the top of the head. Not off or anything, just <laughs> brighter. <laughs> On the toe of the brush, you can see I'm just touching it, and that little, those little touches kind of make that feather effect, right? Oh, yeah. Come in maybe here and get a little more deep green. And my brush has sort of got intermixed colors. That creates some interesting little feathering. Is that phthalo? Phthalo green. Now, if I get white into it, it goes pretty mint. I'm 
Look at that. Now I got a little mint green going. Very minty. Ooh, congratulations to all everyone who are celebrating cancer-free anniversaries. That's fantastic. I saw that's a five-year anniversary. Good. Always that's, good. That's a super awesome high five. Keep up the good healing. Lots of apples. Because apples are apples and they taste yummy. Not because it's good medical advice. They're just really tasty and you should eat them. Uh. <laughs> Let me continue to tap some green here. I agree with the uh, that they're very tasty in there. A little bit of light green there. See how that kind of creates little highlights on those feathers? I see them. It makes them reflective and shiny. It does. It makes them super shiny. We have friends in Scotland. Hello, Scotland. All and right. Kansas. Check that out. We're not in Kansas anymore. Kind of got a really awesome little bird going, man. I did live in Kansas once. Let's. It's very I think far we're away. kind of really getting there. Yeah. I think let's come back and finish this sucker up. Yeah. Mm hmm. Let me go over here and make sure. Yes. The detail brushes out. This is that step that's every once in a while getting away from us. Step nine. It's fine. It's, it's going to be it's, fine. It's time. For nine. We did it. You right. did it. You guys, oh. I want to see your paintings. What did you Share them with me online. You can find me all the places. Um, I know somebody's going to write me and be like, have you stopped making full length videos? No. So what but are you if doing? You're over on the watercolor channel and you see short videos and John will verify this. I found it. I edited it. Yeah. I made it. The whole thing. So the whole thing. I'm not saying that makes a good job. It's like, it would be Yo, better you did really John good. Did it. But I did it myself. They were beautiful. And you can find them on Pinterest and the watercolor channel and sometimes the stories or reels on Instagram. Whole tutorials in one minute. And, and my youngest said I did a good job. So what are you doing in step nine? We're going to paint the face. The face. Details. So I'm going to take a little detail brush. This is a number one little tiny detail brush and I'm going to load up with a little black. Bird face. And come along the beak and capture the details. It's nice to get some little depth and details going, right? Now, if I get some gray, load it up on said brush, as you do. And come right here. So back of the beak. And then we tap, 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 back of the feathers. Because there's always a little bit of little gray back of the feather. Tap, 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 back of the feathers. I can't find my monogram liner. Hmm. Do you need uh, help locating one? No, I'm okay. I can. I'm all right for right now. But it is a mystery to me. Hmm. Well, if it's a mystery to you. It's a mystery to everyone. <laughs> I'm going to come in and fill this in with a little bit of black. Making the bead of the eye. You're saying it's beady little eyes? Doesn't have beady little eyes. No, I'm not saying that. They're just bead-like little eyes. Not beady. No way, beady. Just sort of bead-like. Right. Too light. I think that's be more gray. You want to just capture that sort of outline.
So what? many wonderful chats. So many wonderful chats. So I'm getting that black in there. And then I'm going to come in and grab some really shockingly bright blue. But I haven't rinsed out the black. And this is still wet. So that'll give me kind of a grayed blue. And I'm going to tap that on the back of the eye. And then I'll get a little more white. And get that on the center of the eye. Now, was this painting from the Big Art Quest? No! But I, uh, no. There was one like it. One like it. What was it from? <laughs> was it part of a series? I don't know if it was part of a series. It's so long ago, and I, I it came up on my feed the other day, and I was like, man, I want to <laughs> repaint that. <laughs> it may have been part of a series. Could have been. Consider this. It was early days of the YouTube channel, I'll tell you that. Version 2. <laughs> yeah. I'm just making sure that looks nice. Emmy, step to your right. I want to look at that. Oh, yeah, I want to see what you're doing. Okay, that's really good. Okay. I'm going to get a little more white and kind of that out here maybe a little bit and let's get some of that going come up a bit on the top of the beak there we go sometimes I look back at the screen just to see it at a distance yeah and then let's get some little touching reflections, kind of little highlights, the last few. Ooh, those are nice. I just got to get those little ones on the belly. Notice it's just about kind of making those little touches, right? If you over, if you over highlight, you can always come back. Not hard to do. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That's a bird mix always. Hmm. I haven't really been into a bird that has any sort of natural feathers where I somehow don't get into those two. Interesting. So it's good to keep those around. Guys, I'm kind of bummed, but I think we did it. Yeah? We did it. It does look pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, little touches that you can do. Sometimes I just get into the last little. Yeah, the little highlights on the leading of the wing, yeah. the feather on the, on the. You just want to, you kind of, you take those last little minutes and you're like, oh, where can we. All those little highlighty highlights. Birds are shiny. And this is really a pretty quick video. Yeah, it really is. We did, so it's not, it's, you know. And you can always continue to highlight. I can. John's like, you're done. <laughs> no, no. you. I, I like your highlights. You're good. And, and uh, you're. I was just a little bright, so I had to knock that back. You went a little bit there, but you don't want so much. And in fact, I might take it into. Yeah. You, you... Like, almost like the yellows, guys. I love your highlights. A little bit, yeah, and maybe even back here, just just a titch. Not, don't get crazy with it. Don't get crazy with it, guys. Let's sign it. Shall we sign it? That would be awesome. I think we should sign it. Let's see if I can find a better brush to sign it with. See, I, I can look around. For no, no, that's okay. I, I'm sure what it is is that I washed it somewhere. Oh, and it's clean. All of them are clean. <laughs> Bid that we have sensible. clean brushes put away. Well, I think that's redeemed. I think that's awesome. So if you mods can go find the old hummingbird with, uh, if the mods can go find the old hummingbird with the... <laughs> You can see it's a better lesson, I think. I think so. 
And I think you guys are going to get a great result. I think this is going to be pretty on your wall, big or small. Um, next weekend, we will be having, uh, for sure, gold lips and a lavender chair. Who knows what else? I might throw at you 32 watercolor techniques coming up on Wednesday. And who knows how many short tips, techniques, or tutorials I'm going to be doing over on the watercolor channel. So be sure and go over and subscribe to that because it's a whole separate channel. Mm. Cause, because I did that because you guys would ask me, have you stopped painting acrylic? And so I was like, I should just separate these up. <laughs> that won't confuse anybody anymore. It's a channel for watercolor, channel for acrylic, and they're both getting uploads all the time. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.